Next, let's look at the graphics, and we'll show you the high-level functions that we'll use to generate images. Our Nokia image is a very small image. The size is 48 pixels high by 84 pixels wide, and each pixel can be a 0, which is off, or a 1, which is on which means the coordinates go from 0 to 83 and in graphics this pixel right here is located at coordinate 0, 0. That is at origin. That's the origin and this pixel up in this corner is going to be at the X position of 83 and the Y position of 0. Uh, this one down in this corner is going to be at the X position of 0 and the Y position of 47. And this, this corner will be at 83, 47. And so in this way, we will define each pixel with a unique X, Y coordinate. The basic function for producing graphics in this game will be to create or to draw into this screen a bump image. A bump file is a standard graphics file that we can produce and when we place a bump file onto the screen we will specify which file, which image to produce and we will specify the position of this uh, lower left dot. So each uh, sprite, whether it's an object that's an enemy ship or uh, the player's ship or a bunker each of these objects is a bump image and we call that a sprite. Yes. And we can have missiles too. And missiles too. Okay. So the particular function that we're going to call is labeled Nokia 5110 underline. That means it's a function in the Nokia module and it's called print BMP and the next coordinate will be the X position so if we produce we write an 8 here then the X position of the lower left corner of the bump will be 8 and if we put it at 47 then the Y coordinate here will be at 47. That'll be the bottom row. The next parameter of this function is the pointer to the image itself. And you will see that there are lots of images uh, drawn for us. The player ship uh, zero, here we go, player ship zero is one of the pre-drawn images uh, which will look like the player ship. And the last coordinate, the last parameter, is a threshold which will decide which colors to produce, which colors to be off and which will be on. And so if we produce a zero in this, then any color which is zero will be off and any color which will be one to fifteen will actually turn on the pixel. This will be a this is a threshold. Because our bump images are going to be 4-bit color. And we only have a 1-bit display. So if this display were a color display, then you could change the threshold and render a color sprite in the same place. Excellent. So John, uh, it looks like the print BMP, from what I understand, is going to change a virtual image and not the actual physical image. It seems like there is another routine called the Nokia 5110 display buffer. And this routine will be the one that actually displays the 
screen the entire screen onto the onto yeah. the Nokia device. There's a third one. The Nokia 5110 underline clear buffer. will clear the array. So there's an array, you'll find it in the program, it's called screen. And this memory buffer contains the virtual image that we will draw next. So this, this memory buffer contains the virtual image of the screen that we will draw next. And we can see that this 504 is 48 pixels by 84 pixels. A divided by 8 bytes per pixel is our 504. So these 504 bytes contain the 48 by 8 pixel rendered image that we're going to draw next. So the software will first clear the buffer, which will clear this screen, and then it will draw a whole bunch of bumps all over the screen where you want them. And then when you're ready to create a new image, we will call this function and the screen buffer is then dumped onto the actual screen and we'll see it. This is the element that we're going to call 30 times a second. So, John, you said that the display buffer routine is called 30 times a second. Um, the way we describe the flowchart, the display buffer is called in the main. So if I'm displaying in the main, the main was not an interrupt driven one. So how is it 30 hertz? It will be 30 hertz because we will send a flag or a semaphore from the interrupt service routine into the main to say, draw me a new picture. So that's how we'll make it to be 30 hertz. The other question is, why is it 30 hertz? If we make it a lot slower than 30 hertz, like 10 hertz or 5 hertz, the display will flicker. And if we make it a lot faster than 30 hertz, we're essentially wasting time because our eyes can't see that difference. That sounds perfect. All right. This is the starter file for lab 15. The first thing we see at the top of this C file are the hardware requirements. These are the specific connections you must make in order for us to be able to share your game with other students. Again, the hard the slide pods tied to PE2. You have two buttons uh, on PE0 and 1. Your DAC is on port B. Uh, if you want to flash some LEDs, they can be here on port B4 and 5. The Nokia display uh, which is either a red one or a blue one, uh, depends upon where you buy it, but it's connected to PA7, 6, 5, 3, and 2. This is a example bump file, and embedded in this file, in this bump image, are the pixels. And down in this part of the image, we can see some Fs and zeros. Zeros are going to be off, Fs are going to be on. This is a 4-bit bump file, and it will draw the small enemy, number 30. And so there are a lot of images that we can draw, small enemy 30, small enemy 20, small enemy 10, the player ship, uh, a small enemy, extra small enemy, some of the bunkers. Uh, bunker 0 is actually one that has fully uh, functional. And as the bunkers are being destroyed, they can be changed shape. Bunker 1 and 2 and 3 are bunkers being destroyed. We have some explosions. Big ones, small ones. We have missiles that can go up and we can have missiles that can go down. Uh, missiles that go up and lasers going down. And so now we're at the main loop, the main program. The starter file is not the game, that's yours to do. But what I'd like to illustrate in this main program is how the graphics work. 
So this is not the solution to the lab, but rather an explanation of how the graphics work. We're going to be running at 80 megahertz. Uh, there is a random number generator that you can use if you want. And these are the functions uh, that we need to call. So John, why would I use a random number generator in a game? Well, it makes the game more fun. Every time you play it, it's just a little bit different. Okay. All right. The initialization function is the hardware initialization for the Nokia display. We talked about there being a buffer. Okay? And so the buffer, clear buffer function will clear the screen buffer. And then if I display that cleared buffer, what we have at this point is a completely empty screen. Next we'll show you some examples of calling. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to Let's go ahead and download the code and run it. Okay, so download, click, debug. Run the cursor. Step over. Where's my step over? There it is. Step over. We're running now at 80 megahertz. The random number generator is initialized. The hardware for the Nokia is initialized. Uh, notice the screen has some displays from last time I ran it. And when I call the clear buffer, we can see that the screen didn't clear, the software virtual array got cleared. And it's only when I execute the display buffer, I'm going to step over to the display buffer, and we will see the display is now cleared. In a similar way, the next function to call is a print bump. And I'm going to produce or draw the player ship in the middle, that's 32, somewhere uh, sort of near, uh, sort of the, sort of the middle, but in the bottom row, 47. Okay, so I'm going to execute this function, and again, you notice the display didn't change, and that's because I just drew that bump into the virtual variable, the virtual array. So we'll draw a uh, a bunker. Step over, draw my bunker. Uh, draw a bunch of enemies. Here I'm going to draw a bunch of enemies. Uh, I'm going to put them on the top row. Uh, a bunch of different enemies. Step over, step over, step over. Again, nothing happens until I hit which... John, can you pause there? Yeah. I want to take a look at what, what you're passing as the second parameter to a print BMP. Okay. Okay, here I'm going to draw an enemy. 64 is pretty much over towards the right-hand side of the screen. This uh, define function will tell me how high the enemy is. And so, as you can see, this enemy is 10 pixels high. So 10 minus 1 is 9. And if I put him in the Y position of 9, and he's 10 high, this will be exactly on the top. So he is as high as he can go onto the screen. And the third parameter is our, our uh, array that contains the bump. Yes. This is a, a an array stored in ROM which contains the bump image. And the last parameter is the threshold. A zero will show up as off and any number bigger than zero will show up as an on. Okay, now we're ready to display the yeah, bump. Yeah, come on. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, step over, okay, and we see the image that was created by these um, seven calls to the print bump is now shown on the screen. So there are three different kinds of, uh, of enemy ships, a bunker, and the player. Absolutely. Now, no game yet. That's your job. Uh, this function for the starter file is just going to wait five seconds. Let's show you another feature of the graphics driver, and that is to do character output. The clear function is a function which will clear the screen. Uh, and then if you want to output characters or numbers to the screen, we can set the cursor uh, in the row column location, step over, and then draw uh, characters to the screen. So it's in, a, it's in row number one, column one, and it draw, and it output the screen, and it output the string. Step over, 
Step over, step over, step over, step over. And down here, this could be your score. As you can see, I don't have any score. 1,234 points. Right. So in, in summary, what we saw in the starter file and what the description before is that there's a screen buffer and a virtual buffer. We, we clear the buffer, which is clearing the buffer that is our screen. And then we have a display buffer, which will render it. So the first thing we did is cleared it, then displayed an empty buffer. And then we added a bunch of bumps to the screen buffer. And eventually, when we were done with adding all the bumps, we displayed this buffer. And once we did that, we delayed for a little bit of time and then, and then went on to show a, a text message on the screen by calling these functions called set cursor, out string, and uh, out deck. All right. So now you have all the elements for, for building it, except we need to look at a, a timer module, which is very similar to the Sysdict, but we'll go through the details of that. Okay.